Sorry, I was just practicing my keepy uppies. It's Water Safety Wednesdays week three, isn't it? Episode three. Ah, okay. Well, we're talking about float this week. We're looking at our Be Safe, Have Fun poster. We've already done number one, Stop and Think. We did number two last week, Stay Together. And this week we are on three, which is float. Life jackets float. That's why I've got this on, and that's why people on boats wear them in case they fall in the water and they inflate and they'll uh, potentially save their lives. Also, this ball floats, and if somebody was in trouble in the water, if you threw them that, they could grab hold of it, and that would help them stay afloat too, and this could save their life. Hey, mate, hold on to this. <sighs> So what have we got on the show today? Um, we are, it's a good one. It's a good episode today. So we have got none other than the real Spider-Man here today. He's going to be showing us a float demonstration. He's in my house. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to be having a look at some of the boats um, that you've been making over the course of the week after last week's activity. We're going to have a look at some of those towards the end of the episode two. Um, and we also are going to be doing something together. We're going to be uh, putting our hand in some very cold water. So prep that now if you can. If you can't, it doesn't matter. But if you can get a bowl or a jug of icy water, that would be perfect. So we can do something together later. Okay, good. Um, ah, hellos. Who have we got watching today? I know my, the sound last week was a bit patchy. Can everyone hear me okay this week? Let's have a look. Oh, we've got William in Weymouth who's watching. Hi, William. Josh and Ollie in Reading. Good morning. Um, Keegan, who's eight, and Teddy, who is six, and they're watching from Nuneaton. Hi. And Joseph, who is four. He's watching from Cardiff. Hi, Joseph. Emily from Liverpool. Oh, a lot of you are watching already. And you can hear me okay? Yes? I'll just trust, trust that you can. So, um... I'm going to start with the very main takeaway message from today's float video, just in case some of you turn me off before the end. Please don't know, because I've got lots more to say. But the main message is this. If you find yourself in trouble in the water, float until you feel calm and then think about what to do next. Raise your arm, shout for help, or swim to safety if you can. But don't leave me yet, because we're going to go into more detail and have some fun. Um, so some things float and some things sink. And that's what we're going to look at first. I've got my jug. I've got my jug in every episode. And I've got some toys. And you at home need to decide whether you think they will float or sink. OK, so. Here's my jug. First toy. We've got a funny looking monkey that's made of plastic, but he's quite heavy. Maybe like a dense rubber. Do you think he'll float or sink? Three seconds to decide. One, two, three. Ah, oh, didn't stand a chance. He sank right to the bottom. Okay. Item number two. We've got this rubbery octopus squid. <laughs> Float or sink? One, two, three. Ah, oh, he floats. Just. You see that? 
Two more things. A plastic armadillo. Do you think he'll float or sink? One, two, three. Ah, he sinks. Last one. Got a ping pong ball. Float or sink? One, two, three. It floats. So this is going to be my jug of water. If you can prep some water like that with some ice in it, that would be perfect. And we'll use that later. Uh, OK, so animals float. And I've got some pictures to prove it. Just looking at some of the hellos coming in. Lots of people watching again. Hi, everyone. Um, so here's my first picture. Check this one out. We've got a huge elephant that is swimming. That's floating. Going for a nice little swim. What's next? Ah, uh, oh, this is a cute one. Look at these little sea otters floating on their backs with their hands up in the air. They're cute, aren't they? They're floating on their back. They're chilling out, nice and relaxed and calm. And last one, look at this cool one. What animal's this? It's a polar bear. He's floating really well. He's so relaxed, in fact, that he's asleep. That's a funny place to sleep. They're cool pictures, aren't they? So the good news is that you can float too, but only if you know exactly how and if you practice. And we're going to be looking at that now. In fact, this is where Spider-Man is going to show us how we float. The real Spider-Man. OK. Let me set us up. Where is Spider-Man? Oh, there he is. God, oh, no way. I can't believe we've got Spider-Man in the house. All right, Spider-Man, are we ready to show everyone at home how to float? Let's see if everyone can see that. Everyone still hear me? Oh, there we go, Spider-Man, that's a perfect position. So, so notice how Spider-Man is lying. So we're pretending firstly that he's in the water. He's lying on his back. He's leaning his head right back and looking above his head at the stars. And that brings his mouth and his nose and his chest up. His mouth and nose, that's the important bit that has to be out of the water. His legs and arms, might be a little bit lower. But notice how Spider-Man has stretched out his arms and his legs. And he's very gently sculling, waving at the seaweed and fish below him. And very gently with his legs, he is just moving them gently to help him stay afloat too. And this is a really important position. If we find ourselves in trouble in the water, we need to get into this position until we're calm enough to think about what to do next. And whilst we're here, we can really take control of our breathing. Spider-Man, this is perfect. Mouth and nose up, looking above his head. Let me quickly show you what Spider-Man looks like from above. A bit like a starfish. That's a perfect float position. If you've got space at home, can you try this right now? Spider-Man, show us again. Show us the position that everyone's going to be trying at home. So on your sofa or on a carpet, get in this position. Very gently move your hands. Look above your head. Just like Spider-Man. Looking right above your head. Perfect. Thanks, Spider-Man. Give us a thumbs up. Yeah. Spider-Man, you should go and save the world or something now, I suppose. Go and meet up with Hulk. See ya.
Spider-Man doing a great job. Thanks, Marion. I was glad that I could get hold of him today. Um, so, um, some of you might be thinking, why do we need to know how to float if we can already swim? And the reason is, is because if we accidentally fall into cold water especially, it can take our breath away and can affect our ability to swim. So in that first moment, it's really important to just float until we feel calm, okay? Now, hopefully some of you have a jug at home. If you don't, then don't worry, it's fine, just watch me. So, this water, I haven't got ice in mine. I was going to put ice in mine, but I forgot. Maybe some of you, some of you at home have. Who's got ice in their, in their jug or bowl? Anyone? I'll look at the comments later. So my, my water is just tap water, which is about 12 degrees. If you've got ice in yours at home, then that will be colder than that. But just together with me, if you've got a bowl, just put your hand in and feel how cold it feels. Even that, without ice in it, it feels really cold. And that's about 12 degrees. Did you, did you feel that too? Now imagine what this water, the water you, that you're maybe touching too, would feel like if it was all over your body, all over your neck, your chest, your shoulders, and imagine falling into it accidentally. That is why it takes your breath away. And what, that's why it's dangerous. So that's 12 degrees. The sea in Lowestoft, where I live right now, is about seven degrees, so much colder than that. And swimming pools, to give you an idea of how warm they are, they are about 28 to 30 degrees, so actually really warm, and which, which is why they're, they're safer to swim in. Um, we can put our jugs and bowls of water away now. Thanks for prepping that. Um, so, um, we are now going to have a look at some of the uh, pictures of boats that you've built over the course of the week after last week's activity. There's been some amazing ones. And like we did with the art gallery last week, I'm going to put some music on. Can everyone hear that? I love a bit of music in the background. Let's have a look then. So first of all, we have these cool orange Lego boats and they are made by Henry, who is nine, and Thomas, who is six. They really look like lifeboats, those ones. Wow. What's next? Oh, we've got some boats made out of recycling. It looks like a butter tub and a plastic water bottle. Let's have a look at these. There's three in here. And they are made by Elijah, who is eight, Isaac, who is six, and Caleb, who is three. And they've got Lego lifeboat men in them. How good are they? Next one. This is made out of recycling as well. It's like tin foil, maybe. This one was made by Ellen, and she is four. Only four? Some more recycling boats made out of a milk bottle and some plastic container of some kind. These ones were made by Jude, who is eight, and Bo, who is five. Floating in the sink. And last one. This is amazing, this one. This is a Lego boat. And not only have we got the lifeboat, we've also got a cruiser that the lifeboat is saving. Look at this one. We've got the lifeboat at the front and then a little bit of rope towing the white cruiser back to safety. There's some talented children watching this show, making those incredible boats. Well done. Um, whilst we're talking about activities, let's have a look at this week's activities quickly. Let me get my trusty board up. Oh. Get 
that a bit closer. So, what are this week's activities? Number one, the link for this is again below the video in the description. Look at the cold water impact resource. That goes into a lot more detail about why cold water can be dangerous and is really interesting. So have a look at that one. The link is below. Get your grown up to help you look at that one. Put that one at the top. Number two, practice the float position. It's really important that we practice that as frequently as we can. I know the pools are shut at the moment, but when they're open again and you're next at a swimming pool, practice the float position. Lean back in the water, lie your head back, look at the stars, keep your lungs full of air to help you float and make sure you keep your nose and mouth out. So make sure you practice the float position. You can practice it on your carpet too. Get your grown-ups to practice as well. You can save their lives one day. There we go. And the last one is another art activity, really. It's create a float poster for the RNLI. Now, you could be a lifesaver because the information on a float poster, let me show you one that I've made. I did this one last night quite quickly. RNLI at the top, I've got lots of people in the float position. And then in the bottom corner, it says float to live. So you make your own float poster, share it on social media with the hashtag Water Safety Wednesdays, and you could be a lifesaver too, because whoever sees that poster might get a message from that, and one day they might need to know how to do that too. So that's a good one. Put that up there. Thanks, uh, everyone who has watched until the end. Um, I'm going to finish off with the key message again that I said at the start. If you find yourself in trouble in the water, float on your back until you feel calm and can think about what to do next. Raise your arm, shout for help, and swim to safety if you can. Cool. All right, next week we've got the last one on our Be Safe Fun poster, which is called 999 or 112. Thanks again to all of our emergency services for doing an amazing job, and thank you at home for supporting the RNLI charity, watching these videos, sharing these videos, and helping us uh, do what we um, are trying to do. See you again soon. Have a lovely day. Bye, everyone.